hi everyone i thought it was time to crack on a little bit more with our wonder room from ivy and the inky butterfly i'm just going to share a few plans with you i have said when i did the fish tank i said right away that i was going to do the walls blue now i've decided that's definitely what i'm going to do but i'm going to do them with a pastel um a soft pastel um because it's easier there's a big area to cover it'll be very quick and i can use a sort of um cotton bud or um q-tip that's what you call them in usa to get in these small areas and that's what i'm going to do now i'm going to leave that till last because if i do that now i'm just going to smudge it all over the place so that's that plan um in the video today i'm going to do the floor a little bit not all of it i'm going to show you a little bit of it and my ideas for the rugs and then i'm going to get on and i'm going to finish that floor and the rugs and I'm also going to finish all the furniture. Now I've gone through, I've shown you how to do the desk and part of this cupboard. So I can continue with this using the same colours and exactly the same technique throughout. These handles will be done the same as the drawer handles. Um, I think they're done in um, green gold, but I will check. I would also do this bookcase in the same way as this. So with a darker back, and then a lighter front edge so we'll do that um so i want to just sort of start cracking on basically and getting a bit more done and i don't need to show you how to do every single detail because i think you know i've shown you how to do that it's the same as that it's the same as that you can do it i know you can it's just the same so as i say i'm going to crack on with the floor um, I'm going to show you on this side, just because um, the book's thicker here, it's easier for me to lean. Um, let's zoom in a little. I'm not sure how far I can actually zoom in, because my tripod gets in the way. I think that's it. I've got a piece of paper behind the page, um, ready to go. Now, I'm going to do the floor brown. It obviously looks like wooden um, slats, but... Um, I don't want it to be the same as the um, furniture. So we've got Bistra and Walnut, I think, for this. I can't remember now. But I'm going to use more yellowy browns for the floor. So it looks a little bit different. So my first colour I'm going to grab is this very light brown. This is the lightest brown. It's one, I'm trying to read it, 182. I can ha hardly read it. I don't, you won't be able to. I won't bother showing it to you. I'll look up the colour for you. Um, 182, which is the brown ochre. So it's quite a yellowy brown. And I'm just going to do, actually, I think I'm going to do this one because we've got a full piece to show you. So I'm going to do the whole of it in a layer of this. Now, I'm going to do horizontal colouring for this um, because I don't mind there being a stripey type look in the wood and you'll see why but it needs to be in this direction so I think that is the way the wood grain would lie and we've got some lines drawn on here too from Johanna so that gives us a little bit of an indication okay so that's really basic we've just colored it and you could leave it there but we won't we'll do a little bit more work on it so i want it to be a little bit darker on each edge where it meets the other piece of wood so i'm really just putting down another layer just on that bit so a bit harder here and then just fade it out and they're really straightforward there we go now we do have some shadows which will be coming from the furniture and bits and pieces. I'm not going to worry about them quite yet. What I'm going to do is we've got a lot of very pale here, which I want to go over, and I'm going to use the green gold for that, just to uh, darken it all a little bit. So I'm going to press fairly hard to get quite a good layer down. Don't worry if it goes a bit pale, we can add some darker brown. We're not, I'm not pressing so hard that we get rid of all the tooth of the paper. There will be space for putting another colour in. I'm probably pressing twice as hard as I did with the brown, with the brown ochre. It's quite difficult to describe pressure. Um, we all have a different idea as to what would be light. I know I've seen some people colour a light pressure and you can barely see any colour on the page. 
that isn't my idea of a light pressure for me. So we're all a little bit different. Some of us are more capable of pressing harder than others, depending on our hands. Some people have a few issues with hands. And hopefully you can still see there's a little darker here and here than it is in the center. So we've got a little bit of contrasting color, but I am gonna go back over with the brown ochre, just over those bits again, just to uh, make it even darker. We could use the darker brown. But I really want to keep this nice and warm and uh, more yellowy. I think it looks quite pretty anyway. I just like the colour. But now we're thinking wood grain and shadow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what shall I pick? What colour have we got? I think I might go with that show up. No. We'll go for this colour. This is the Van Dyke brown. It's quite a dark brown. We're only going to use it quite lightly. I'm just going to give it a sharpen because I want it to be really sharp. And I will show you what I am going to do. So to make this look more like it's a wood grain, I'm going to do some lines. Like this. Oh. Across the wood. It's quite random. I don't want them all lining up or being exactly the same length or even being exactly the same darkness, if that makes sense. So I'm just putting on lines there. And I also think that just makes it a, li a little bit more woody. Gosh, my chair is very creaky. And now I'm going to think about shadow under the cupboard. Have a, a line of shadow here. Now you can go all the way across with this but you want to apply your colors in the same order for each of these or else they'll look differently I mean you could make them look slightly different because maybe naturally they wouldn't be identical but um, I'm gonna leave that until I actually color that one I should do it after and just doing basically a line around everything and it just indicates a little bit of shadow and it will look more effective once the whole floor is done I think there we go um yeah that's I might do it it's a little bit darker here so that's our floor it's really quite simple so that's how I'm going to do all of it and hopefully it will look nice and warm um, once it's all done. So there's a lot more on this page than this page, but we'll I'll, I'll do all that. So that was just three colours for the floor. But we've got these rugs. Now, there's a rug on each page. You can just about see them here and here. Can move across just a tad more. I've got all sorts of junk on my desk in the way. Well, I say junk, pencil sharpness and things. So there we go. There are the two rugs. They look quite different to each other, but what I was thinking was if the wall is blue, maybe the rugs would be blue and it would just sort of blend in a little bit and bring some bring some coherence to the page is a word I use a lot. Um so I'm thinking I might what I might do is do this oops similar colours. So let's grab some blues and let's have a think about what we're gonna do. Um let's do a really dark blue. This is the Indanthrene blue. <laughs> Good at pronouncing that. And what I'm going to use this for is these circles here. Can you see them? And I'm going to go around the edge and then do it a little bit lighter towards the center to try and make them look like they're little spheres. I think that's what they're supposed to be. And I'm going to do exactly the same on this one. I'm not going to color it now because it's actually. Um, the edge of the page is leaning on some cables and things. It's, I will look rubbish if I try and do it. So I will do all these the same. Okay. And you can't even see the whole of this rug, I don't think. Oh, yeah. That might work. So round and a bit lighter towards the center. Just do the best you can. It's a very small space. As you see, I'm just going back in to darken up the edges a little bit. And I was going to say do the same on the other side, but we can't actually see the other side of the rug. It goes out of the picture. So that's okay, it's just this side. And I think I'll do these in the same colour. The sort of tassely bits. You could do them multicolours, but I'm going to just keep them plain. 
I don't want to put too much colour in the rug. There is so much going on in this picture. We're going to have so many different colours that I think I'm going to keep it quite simple. Now this dark colour that I'm using here, I am going to use on this rug for the circles, as I said, but also the triangles. All the triangles will be this colour. And they will just be block colouring because I don't think we're going to see a lot of shade and shadow on the rug apart from near the edge. On this one we've got furniture. So where the furniture is near the rug, I will just do a tiny darker line. Um, I haven't got a darker blue. Oh, I have. I've got an indigo. I'll probably use that. Let me just check it's what it's called. A dark indigo. So I'll probably just use the dark indigo on these edges to show the shadow. So my finger's going out of shot. So just to show the shadow along here. Not up there, but just here on the edge of the desk and the edge of the chair leg there. So that's what I will probably do for that. So there's all our dark colour. And I think what I'm going to do on this rug, as I said, I'm going to do all the triangles in this darker colour on this rug. And then we're going to have a lighter colour, which we'll do on the rest. On this one, I'm going to alternate a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think I'm going to do these squares in this dark colour. But I'm not going to press quite as hard. Can you see that slightly lighter? So this bit stands out as looking just a little bit different which is what I want. So I'm going to work my way along in this. I'm not going to do that all now. And then, um, hmm, I'm going to have another colour for these, which I shall choose in a minute, which will be our background for this. And I think we're just going to have these two blues, keeping it quite simple. So that one in this blue, it should be an even colour all the way across. Um, Hmm. Hmm. just having a think I think for this layer I'm going to go in here and in this bit missing out that triangle and in that bit I hope you can see where I'm sort of going with this pattern it's going to just repeat along and so all these bits will be in the lighter blue even though there's a stripe, that'll all be the same colour. And then this across here, so it matches with that line. And then on this bottom one, I think I'll just do the old bits in this colour. And the main bit in the other blue. Um, I'm going to choose the other blue now. Hmm. Um, how much lighter do I want it to be? B is the question. I think this shade will work. This is the cobalt blue. I can never spell it. And I'll pop it in and then you can decide if you think that works. There we go. No, I always want to spell cobalt blue. C-O-L-B-A-L-T. But there isn't a... There's only one L. The second L. So there's that blue. I think that works quite well. And then the same here. So all of these in the same colour. So this is really simple colouring. It's quite, it's nice and chilled. You don't have to worry about shading. Just try and keep an even-ish pressure. But if you feel that you can't, go on the lighter side and then you can build layers up so that it all looks fairly even in the end tricky doing that very edge bit but there we go that's how it's going to look the background of this rug the main bit that be in this color so what I'm going to do is uh, go away and finish the whole of the floor both rugs and take a photo it's going to be quite hard to take a photo of both bits I might take two photos to show you one of each just because fitting both into one is going to be tricky and uh, show you how I've done. What I would do is, um, like here, that is a lot lighter than this, and this is a bit lighter. So I'm going to probably go through it and try and even out those colours a little bit, if I can. Just to, but it's easier once you've done it all. You can then spot something that looks a little bit odd and just fit it in. And um, I do want to get this furniture done as well. 
um, this cupboard and the bookcase as I said. Um, I may do that before I take a photo, probably not. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping I might get that done before our next video and so you might want to do the same thing. I don't know if you're colouring along or not or just taking a few little hit, hints and tips here and there but that's me. I just really felt like I wanted to get quite a big area done today on this page because I feel like it's been hanging around a long time so if I can I thought if I can do the floor and get all that done that's quite a big bit and if I can do the bookcase and the cupboard um, and get that done again that's quite a big bit so then um, it will feel to me like a lot more is done and as I said I'm going to do the blue pastel background right at the end so that'll be quite that's quite a big area but we've still got lots of details and we have to get used to colouring details because it looks like Johanna's next book is going to be full of um, little details so uh, that's going to be I, it's called what's it called rooms of wonder and I think every room is going to look a bit like this every page so uh, we're going to have to uh, be really up for, um, as I say, lots of little details. But uh, sometimes I'm in the mood for details and sometimes I'm not. But that's fine because um, I'm lucky and I have several different books to choose from. So uh, I don't always have to colour in the same one. So there we go. I'm just fiddling and faddling while I'm talking to even out that colour a little bit because it's slightly bothering me. There we go. But I'm going to leave that now and uh, and leave you. But thank you so much for watching and thank you all for all of your support. You've all been fantastic. Your comments, your likes, your subscribes and everything else is just brilliant. So thank you so much and happy colouring.